good afternoon from Tumby Bay on the Air Peninsula. We progressed our way further south by half an hour. It's typical overland exposure style. <laughs> um, and we're camped up at Tumby Bay. We are staying at the RV uh, council run free camp for the self sufficient just out of town um, tonight. Um, and we're not sure if we'll stay a couple of nights or what we'll do. We're, you know, going with the flow today. Uh, but we've decided to come into the beach for the afternoon because um, it's nice, absolutely beautiful weather. And uh, you know what? Why not? We've brought dinner with us as well, so um, we'll be cooking up some burgers and that kind of thing by the seaside. I'm looking forward to it. It'd be awesome if um, the sunset lit up too, but I don't know if we're going to be hanging around that long because it's so late these days. Uh, here in, in South Australia, daylight saving and all of that stuff. The sun doesn't go down to like nine o'clock. <laughs> so you never know. You never know. We might hang around until eight when it might start to colour or I don't know. Aria's pretty well entertained on the beach, so it's kind of keeping Daniel entertained, I think, um, for that long. <laughs> Anywho, I'll show you what I can. Time to be back. Also, just thought I'd share with you, I'm absolutely loving my new picnic rug from Encampment. Um, it's, I've used it so much. You whack it out at the campsite for the kids to play on, here at the beach, the picnics, like constant. Love it, love it. <laughs> so we grabbed some hot chips Hi. from the Tumby um, takeaway, Tumby Bay takeaway, across the road from the foreshore. I better see it actually. Over there. And they are 10 out of 10 chips. I'd say they're in my top three chips on the whole trip. Yeah, we eat a lot of hot chips. In 14 months. <laughs> we eat, like whether it's hot chips from a takeaway or with a smitty or something at a pub, but these are like 10 out of 10. Top. Like 11 out of 10 chips. Yeah, they're like immaculate chips. So if you are Tumby Bay, hot chips from the takeaway for shizzle. Tumby. to Tumby Bay uh, to check out all the mural art um, this town is known for. There's like maybe tw somewhere between like 20 and 30 different murals around the town and um, I'm checking them out so I'll show you a few of those. Up to you, Aria. What are we gonna go and do? We're gonna go stalking and see leafy sea dragons. And hopefully see leafy sea dragons, yes. Uh, I got in touch with a certain local that uh, I found. <laughs> I'm not gonna give it away <laughs> in case we don't see any. <laughs> um, and he gave us a few hints and tips to try and see them here at Tumby Bay um, under the jetty. So we've come today, it's a bit cooler and a bit windier than I would like, but I'm gonna brave it. I've got my, uh, you know, wet, wet suit on, not, <laughs> um, and try and brave the cold and see if we can see some leafy sea dragons. Hopefully we see them nice and quickly so then if it gets too cold I can get out <laughs> and take it off the bucket list. So fingers crossed, let's see how we go.
All right, we, as promised, we've relocated from the RV park um, at Tumby Bay, and we found a beautiful setup here at the Red Cliff Beach Free Camp. Um, absolutely free. Um, about 20 minutes south of Tumby Bay, and you set yourself up along a dirt road type thing and overlook this amazing view. So this is us. Completely open, so the solar is working hard to keep us energized. And um, we get to just look out at that. It's amazing, for free. There's an absolutely stunning white beach. We've already been for a swim, gone for a walk. Um, there's some rocks to snorkel around, which we'll do tomorrow. And um, absolutely no complaints. Absolutely no complaints for zero dollars. I can't believe it. I love South Australia and the Air Peninsula. Uh, if you didn't know, we bought ourselves an air fryer. Good old Aldi. Um, it's a large size one. Can't remember how many liters. Can you, Daniel? No. Uh, but we're giving um, the little potato gratins a go in the air fryer for dinner tonight. See how it goes. Potato gratins in the air fryer. I rate them. It was an easy dinner too. It was only like 15 minutes. No, 18 minutes in the air fryer. Easy as. So now you're here again knocking at my door A little too late for I'm sorry for The lights went out cause you kept cutting the cord And I started to fade into your grave See I finally opened up my eyes And I saw me coming back to life That I'd be better from camp is this amazing salt lake and we've timed it really well that it's in some recent rain there's still a puddle of water behind so you can see the reflections so daniel's come down fingers crossed for some nice reflections on this amazing salt lake i can't believe the reflections it's unreal it's like glass like with the white salt underneath it's just epic I don't know if the camera's showing it, but I'm sure if Daniel gets a capture, you'll be able to understand. Well, our door's broken. As it is with caravan life, stuff breaks. Fairly regularly stuff breaks actually. So you gotta get used to that and dealing, dealing with it. Um, 
So I'll show you what's happened. We got a door handle and on the outside, the handle part, that part has totally snapped off. It's been going for a while, so I've been using uh, Araldite and Epoxy to repair it, um, but now it has totally broken. Now, luckily, we got the caravan in for some repairs on Monday, so Saturday, so two days time anyway, so that's all right. But in the meantime, check out Ingenuity. Door opening device. Tied one of Amanda's hair ribbons onto the door. And then when I close it, oh, I've got no handle to open. I can pull down on the ribbon. Show you that again. I just have to make sure the ribbon's outside. Uh, yeah, come along. Pull down on the hair ribbon and open the door. Bingo bongo, job done. Adapt and overcome, as they say. Hello. Hello. Thought I'd share our dinner with you tonight. Haven't done a cooking with Manda for a while. Um, I should have filmed the lemon slice. Mm. I made the Sanders birthday today. Happy birthday, Daniel. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I made him a lemon slice for his birthday cake because uh, he loves it. Um, should have filmed it. I'll do it another time for you. Um, anyway, we're doing a leftovers dinner because we're off grid and we've got leftovers that need using up. So I thought I'd share it with you. Um, so we've had a bunch of leftover pork roast from last night. Night before, can't remember. Um, and we're just going to do a pork stir fry um, fried rice. So we're using because we're off grid. We've just done couple of these packets of the 90 second rice um, and we're just using some frozen veg as well um, doing a bit of an easy but kind of healthy dinner what do you think Aria? yep yummy yummy <laughs> All right, so we've added in some hoisin sauce, some soy sauce, rice wine vinegar, fish sauce, tomato sauce. Um, I think that was it. <laughs> and just, we kind of just add it in and um, taste it along the way. Because it's just a higgledy piggledy kind of dinner. But, healthy. Uses up some leftovers, uses up what you've got in the cupboard. Love it. Old fried rice. Oh yeah, if you don't already know, I don't eat eggs, so we don't put fried, um, egg in our fried rice, because I don't like it. Got some sh um, spring onion chopped up, ready to go on top when I serve it. I think that's it. Okay. I think it's ready to go. Delish. And there you have it. Delicious. Fried rice. Hey guys, that brings an end to our time here at Redcliffe, south of uh, Tumby Bay. I mean, it's been an absolutely gorgeous spot. Like, really enjoyed it. Free water, beaches, I'll show you behind me. I'm sure we'll put plenty of videos in for this area, but yeah, just what an intense, intense, amazing spot. One of the best we've camped at, actually. Like I'd rate it 11 out of 10. So yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Let's crack on the rest of the Air Peninsula. We are camped up at Port Lincoln now and um, just chilling out, having some dinner, watching, watching um, the sunset which was going to be just clouds. And we're like, oh, maybe in the distance, a little poke of colour here and there. But it went 360 degrees the whole way in utter epicness. I'll pop in some footage.
What's for dinner, Daniel? Nacho, nacho, nacho. Nacho, <laughs> nacho, nacho. Okay, stop. <laughs> So we made our own nacho mix as we always do. What's mince, in that? mince, onion, beans, garlic. Today we've got corn in because we had some corn to use up. Uh, tinned tomato, bunches of herbs. Such as? Such as like cumin, a little bit of chili, um, paprika, coriander, things blah, blah, blah. like that. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> or you can just use a taco pre mix packet. And then mix the corn chips in there, put the meat mixture on top cheese and then I might cut up some cherry tomatoes and we've got some coriander cherry tomatoes and spring onion I think for the top and some sour cream maybe yeah so it's yeah be nice layered the uh put the corn chips on the bottom then the meat then the cheese and, and today we're trying it on the air fryer instead of in our oven because apparently why not <laughs> Wait till we dress them. They're gonna look really good. How long was that in the air fryer? That was nine minutes, I think. Nine minutes. And probably a little bit too long. So yes. probably eight minutes, I reckon. Oh, we're at, uh, what's it called? Glenrock something? Glen, no. no, it's Lincoln Estate Wines. Lincoln Estate Wines. Wine. He doesn't even know where he's at. <laughs> <laughs> and we just came out for the afternoon from Port Lincoln, so we've got a bottle of sparkling and a little cheese, pre-packed cheese platter from them. Afternoon snack? A little afternoon snack, yeah. It was about 20 minutes-ish from Port Lincoln. And it's nice. uh, yeah, it's really nice. The sun has come out on this rainy... Yep. Forecasted day. <laughs> the kids have uh, kangaroos to play with, little kangaroos and some sheep and peacocks and stuff, so that's cool. They're entertained. Keeps them entertained. Very family friendly. Yeah, it's good for the parents to give us <laughs> half an hour to relax. Yeah. fixing our window because, our blind because there's no stock anywhere yeah it's gonna be a four month wait uh, so this happened on the Cape so that was Eight back years, in like six August ago. six months ago and there's another four month wait for a replacement um, and I saw a post online in one of the groups last night saying it's actually really easy to fix because it isn't snapped as such so we're gonna have a go at fixing it to see if we can actually have our window back <laughs> so first things first we're gonna take it off the window take all the Screws out and get it out and have a look at it. So it's the blind bit that's broken. Yeah. It doesn't actually, uh, see this? <laughs> it doesn't do that. All right, so we're just going to demonstrate the problem. So if one little thing is a little screw in this plastic end in here, right in here is actually gone, so it doesn't hold um, in properly. And then when you retract, it doesn't um, retract up. <laughs> so something's happening with the like feeding yeah. of it <laughs> we're gonna figure it out why and how <laughs> and fix it so we're very gently unscrewing these make sure you... yep, nice. all right we just got the screws out and we started pulling it off and safe to say it's been a while since this has been uh, pulled off and cleaned inside of Oh my god, that is disgusting. <laughs> this is a 2017 caravan, we're in 2021, and we're assuming this hasn't been done before. <laughs> and the screws are rusty. Mm, everything's rusty inside there. Which is weird. A bit, a bit average, isn't it? Mm. Let's take this outside and clean it off, eh? Yeah. <laughs> we can probably give it a hose to clean the fly screen before we fix it. Oh, I don't know about that. You reckon? Yeah. 
I'd make a guess that the thread of this has snapped as well inside. Okay. So, you have to be careful though. And this screws, this thread's been numb. Okay. Might have to buy a replacement screw. All right, so we've pulled this off to have a look at what's actually going on inside and what's broken. So we can see that the fishing line is gone from here. Well, but it starts back up up here, so let's see with that. All right, we've got the end caps off and now we're sliding the aluminium assembly off. All right, so we figured it out, haven't we, Amanda? Yeah, so the so, three yeah. that have snapped. We've got one. five, five uh, places for threads to go through. And so the three on this side have all snapped. Which run along the opposite they, end. They go up and across. In the track. And then up to the far corner, to an anchor. And then these two here on this side are still okay. So they're up and across and up there. So we need new lines for this one. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. So, lucky we're going to Bunnings. Yeah. Get some fishing lines. What are you doing, Amanda? Uh, just re-threading the fishing line. So we had to go end up at a fishing shop to get what we needed. Funny that, the, uh, fishing waxed, line. <laughs> they had the wax thread as well, didn't they? Yeah, so we tried a curtain place, curtain and blind place. Um, but they didn't have what we needed, everything that was too big. And he said, try the fishing shop. So went there and they had everything we needed. This is what we've ended up with, a rob line. It's a waxed one mil thread. It looks like exactly the same as what came off the uh, line. So. I don't know if it is, but it looks the same. Yeah, hopefully we can do this repair. Fingers crossed we can get it to get done and looking good and working well. All right, we're up to reassembly of the bottom half. So we're trying to carefully thread this on at the moment. It's kind of a two-person job, but Amanda's filming, so... Uh... Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah, they've got to be pulled with it. <laughs> All right, we got the bottom half done. Check this bad boy out. It's never slid that well before. No. <laughs> All right, let's not get too excited. We've still got the other half to do. We got the bottom half sorted. We need to just <laughs> add in that you um. Yeah, you just. Up and around and then just follow the old lines really. Yeah, so up and around here and up around there. Alright, let's do the top one. Alright, so we figured out a trick. We've threaded the new thread through a needle that we have. Luckily. Just, I mean, just fits. And so we just doubled it over and it not tied it on so the holes don't get too big. And we're just poking it through. And tip for young players. Instead of re-threading a new piece for every one, we've just um, used the same thread on the same needle and run it through, and then when it gets to the top, we just cut it again. So it never keeps threading. <laughs> This is the end cap and it just gets placed on and screwed in. Just making sure these are nice and tight and the strings are nice and tight and firm and now we're going to give it a practice run. Uh, well not a practice run, we're going to give it a run. <laughs> make the strings tight to the right. ends. So make sure that the blinds open at the top, like closed, sorry, fully closed. Retracted. Retracted and then make this the side strings that go down tight when it's fully retracted, otherwise, it won't retract properly. So, and now it's moving really smoothly and nicely. We have a working blind, we might when it gets back installed. <laughs> All right, let's keep going on. We're gonna put these side channels on back on now, should be easy enough, but never say never. <laughs> All right, the ceremonious bringing back of the window. Oh, I saw a bit of water in it, Amanda. Oh. 
I should leave it to dry. You get the idea. There's a million and one screws. Yeah. Look what we fixed. So smooth. <laughs> and the other one, I've lined up. Lined up. Lined down. Fixed. Celebrate good times, come on. <gasps> oh my god, it's so easy to move. So smooth. Man, if uh, your blinds are not, not like retracting properly, that is what you need to do to them. Yeah. <laughs> I think we need to do a couple more blinds in here. Oh god, maybe in a week or two. <laughs> <laughs> We've got enough stuff. What have you got, Aria? What is it? It's a swimsuit like that. Well. A wetsuit. A wetsuit. Keep you a bit warmer in this cold South Australian. Yeah, you're going to have to grow into it a little bit. It's a little bit big, but...